Why don't we go ahead and start? Uh, the clerk will take the roll. Chair Truesdale. Present. Vice Chair Heiser. Uh, Member Abramo. Nope. Member Nolan. Present. Member Schlagner. Member Nunez. Present. Member Bradshaw. Present. Thank you. Okay. Uh, this meeting of the Downtown Design Review Committee has been properly noticed and is in compliance with the meeting laws. We'll go to the first item of the agenda is public comment. During this portion of the agenda, must be limited to matters on the agenda for action. If you wish to be heard, give your name and for the record and the amount of discussion as well may be limited. Anyone will speak to this portion of the uh, agenda? Seeing no one... We will move on to item four, possible action, uh, approval of minutes by reference for the February 18th, 2014. Motion to approve. I second. Okay, there's a motion. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Those are approved. <coughs> Item five, ARC 240 or 24696, DDRC, public hearing applicant, the D Las Vegas Casino Hotel owner, D Rock Third Street LLC et al. For possible action on a request for a major amendment of an uh, approved master sign plan, ARC 46358, for addition of wall signs at an existing hotel casino with waivers of the maximum eligible sign area, minimum sign clearance, and illumination standards. Staff? Mr. Chairman, this request would amend the previously approved master sign plan and design review at the corner of the Carson and Third. <coughs> And this would add wall signs as part of a pedestrian ballet area and an open air events area for the hotel. Um, the existing ballet signs in the building at the northeast corner would be removed and replaced by a canopy on which a 200 square foot backlit logo of the D would be uh, proposed. And then they would need a waiver to allow no LED or exposed uh, neon where at least 50% is required for that sign. Staff would recommend denial of that waiver as they could provide the required illumination. Uh, the northeast and southwest corners, so both corners of the intersection, would feature two portal type structures, each containing animated LED panels that would operate in unison. So it would be one distinct sign for each portal. The portal on the southwest corner would be double-sided so that it could be viewed from both the east and the west. Proposed on the top of the portal on the southwest corner is a double-sided wall sign consisting of a 40 square foot circular cabinet containing uh, the LED illuminated letters DLB. Below this is proposed a five square foot cabinet with the words Downtown Las Vegas Event Center. Waivers would be needed for the portal signs to allow a sign clearance of two feet from the public sidewalk where at least 10 feet is required and to allow coverage of 136% of the eligible sign area where 50% would be the maximum allowed. Staff would recommend approval of these waivers since the signs <laughs> as proposed are integral to the portal design concept and the standards in this case were intended to pertain to the building walls and not to the, not to architectural features such as the portals. Staff recognizes the innovative signage that's been proposed and supports the signage that contributes to the theme of the hotel. However, the proposed D logo at the valet could be redesigned to meet the casino overlay district illumination standards, um, so staff recommends denial of the request. Just to clarify what you presented, you're saying that the D, this one here, the red? Yes. They're not, they're not wanting that illuminated? No, we, we, we are. We are wanting that illuminated, um, and it's actually, that we're proposing to actually have it backlit with LED. As and opposed I, to, okay. Yeah, so I think me, there was a... Let me a your comments on the record now, get back to that. Um, applicant? 
Oh, Main. okay. Oh, Alice O'Keefe with Gensler. All right. And if you want to... We're the architect. Tell us what you're proposing here. Sure. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yep. Um, <laughs> we're basically, we're, we are proposing um, this metal panel with the inset here, which will say the D Las Vegas. It will be backlit, illuminated. Um, and I have a little rendering kind of showing what that would look like. So it's essentially... Um, just a very simple backlit cabinet um, that will be above on that building face. Uh, one thing to note: we are, we will switch the cabinet to, or we'll switch the lighting to LED um, to be in conformance with their yeah. requests. It, it always. Now the rest of the sign where it shows you it's kind of red white. That is um, stripe patterns on the. Yeah, the, the red indicated here is actually their uh, metal panels that um, this is a, kind of a, a spin on their um, branding uh, elements. They have kind of a striped pattern um, within a lot of their branding, and so we'd like to apply that to the building um, as, as indicated here. So it's, it, it's not illuminated. The only illuminated section is actually the D Las Vegas, or the D. It will actually the D. Okay. And then the portals, those are permanent structures? Uh, yes. I mean, if they're proposed to be, they won't be leading. I mean, they're not going to be putting them up and taking them down. So. In these kind of structures, how is this, the lighting protected at the, where the, it's at the lower level where people can touch the sun? Um, we are working with a fabricator now on the how that's being addressed, but essentially there are going to be like televisions, um, LED uh, TVs. Essentially, that was the idea. We had talked about putting a glass piece in front in front of it. Um, we're still kind of working out the engineering of what makes the most sense, but um, mainly because of heat and things like that. Um, but it will not be something that's exposed where people could touch it and there would be any harm. Am I able to put a plastic wine bottle through A plastic wine bottle? Um, Ideally, you shouldn't be. <laughs> yeah, I mean, a plastic should be, uh, should not impact it. I would imagine if someone really wanted to damage it, they brought, I mean, with a baseball bat or something, that probably would but. Mr. Chair, can we have the second speaker um, give his name? Oh, yes. Oh, sorry, Justin Lamb uh, with Gensler as well. This was advertised as a public hearing. Anybody here wishing to speak on this item, either for or against? Or are you spectating? I'm spectating. Okay, oh, yeah, that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> um, then I'll turn it over to the members for comments and questions. What is, uh, so this sign is the south side of the gate on Carson? Correct. Okay, what's there now? There's currently a building that's being demolished. So there is a bank building on that on that that property, and that sign will actually be on the new face of the, the south side of that building. And and with this again, like you said, we're normally dealing with neon. This will have no neon component. It the no the the we're proposing to have it backlit with LED. So if we needed to add like a neon strip around it, I think like we would definitely be open to something like that if it's a requirement to, to make that happen. On the off-premise uh, signage, is there any question about signage off-premise that's waived or we've been through that once before a while ago, this is off-premise, correct? No, it is actually on premise. Look, Mr. Chairman, through you. The D owns the property on both sides, so it's considered on premise. The activities that would be on the Southwest Portal would only be advertised on the Southwest Portal. So they're events, so to speak. Um, those would be at, the events would be advertised on that Southwest Portal sign only, whereas on the Northeast Portal would be the D hotel activities. And uh, correct me if I'm wrong, the applicant, uh, but that was essentially what we had talked about in our pre-application meeting. Yeah. 
same same owners but different different program essentially happening on each of those sites. Um, but the ownership wanted a way of connecting the two uh, properties visually, and so that's why we're proposing these portal elements that have a visual connection. Now I thought I heard two portals, but I believe I'm just seeing the one. Is that correct? There's one at the north east corner of Carson and Third, and there's one at the southwest corner, so a caddy corner for each other. Um, just looking at the map, I thought I just saw Okay, so when I'm looking at this, they're showing this is the one on the southeast. Correct. Southwest. Yeah, southwest. Okay. <coughs> and then uh, if you... No. No, it would be, that's the southeast, is it that? North, northeast, I guess, of the block. Right. Yeah, it's it's right at the the, the yeah northeast corner. Northeast. Correct, and then the opposite yeah. corner, caddy okay, corner. I don't show anything on the map over here. Okay. Oh, I see what you're saying. But on the entertainment lot, there's just one. Correct. Yes. yes. Okay. Correct. Yes. Okay. So the one on the uh, across the street, that's part of an existing building now, too, or that's coming down, or that that will be new and part of the D lot itself. So that built, yeah, it's in going the entertainment lot. You, there's only one side. There's correct? only one. Yeah, the portal. I see. Yes, the portal with the DLV signage above it. So right. there's technically two signs um, on that. But as far as the portal, only one. So, uh, any questions? Yeah, a couple of questions. Um, one regarding the portal. Mm -hmm. um, it looks as though the two portals have their own independent LED panels. One's 150 square feet, one's 180 square feet. Uh, each of these grids represent a panel? Um, in, yes. Uh, we, like I had, had mentioned, we're working out the engineering with the company right now. And we do, hot off the press, have more um, updated, um, more of an updated plan indicating that. But that is, that is, the idea is that the panels make up kind of one image that could kind of circulate through um, the entire um, I'm I'm sure that they could have advertisement, but I think the idea was it really depends on what kind of events are happening, either at the D or at the downtown Las Vegas Event Center. Um, so advertisements of maybe who they're showcasing. I, I don't know if you mean. Yeah. Potentially, potentially. And I probably can't speak to that as the, from the design standpoint, um, because the owner, um, on behalf of the ownership, I would imagine that they would like the options to be able to advertise, depending on what kinds of events. But um, I, I'm not certain. I mean, are we talking separate of the events and items that are going on at the deer? Are we talking like by, I think it's, you know, well, I, I can see it if it something from an artistic? Expression. <laughs> mm -hmm. but, but now, if you get into a point where it's uh, bloodline in the past, whatever, as an image every 30 seconds, um, and that type of product wasn't available on site, or like the city event center's closed. Okay. And the ads, and they were still running more of a marketing plan, uh, not just say tickets for so and so coming in sure. 15, because it said Budweiser every 30 seconds. I think. Yeah. It shifts over to what we would 
least I would see where we're, we're in that gray area of off premise. I see. I, I, I that up. Um, our understanding is that it's more about an advertising for the D and for the downtown Las Vegas Event Center. If there is an event at the downtown Las Vegas Event Center while it's happening where they have a sponsor, they might showcase that, but I would imagine it's it's for that event. So I would ask the staff if, if, if we could add a commission potentially to basically state there'd be no off from advertising unless in conjunction with an event. So we close that loop so we don't wind up like the average uh, 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 world market sign. Okay. And my second question regarding the, uh, the D red facade mm -hmm. outside of the building. Those stripes are shown on those are just etched in or what are they? Are they rails? Yeah, it's a, it's a metal panel system where they actually lock together um, yeah. like a... It's a rib metal a panel. Rib, and the idea is that they would be... Um, just a slight color difference um, so that they can they show that striped. When you say color difference, are they white, red? Oh, they're red. It's they all, still are red. It's all red, so just get some relief. Correct. And we're playing with matte versus gloss. We're, I mean, obviously there's some sun. It's, it's going to get a lot of sun there, so we're, we're making sure that uh, we're looking at, at what we can do to come up with the best solution versus matte and gloss. But the idea is that what we'll probably end up doing is going a brighter red and a darker red in order to create that um, striped striation pattern. And if I'm clear, right now it's just backlit, casual words, the D, I'll say backlit. No animation. No animation. Correct. Correct. It's just That's a white light. Yeah, I mean, I think um, like this is, is what the kind of a render of what that would look like if, if we needed to add like a neon around the border the border of it. Just I think. Here, we have a peer, we still need a waiver that's down because it's less than 50% of that. Well, <clears throat> it would be actually 100% because the sign is the letters. Uh, the red striations is not part of the sign. It's an architectural... It's so perfect. only the cutout portion would be the signage in this case. Okay, so by wrapping that bead, basically, you're achieving 100% illumination. And that meets our requirement, right? Yes. Okay. And only LED is required. Uh, neon is not required. <coughs> I do want to support a modified elevation of the wrap of neon. Okay, but it, it's not... stating that no off-premise advertising Yes. And you said that the neon isn't required, or correct? Okay. So if you do the whole sign with an LED, which is that, that's, that's the what we're proposing. <laughs> yeah. So this this it will be like an acrylic lens that's backlit by LED to create this kind of glow. Correct. Correct. It's it, the entire so. Imagine this entire, all the letters are glowing with uh, an internally lit LED that's diffusing the light with an acrylic panel that goes over it. Does that still qualify as a waiver and that qualifies? The code is somewhat unclear <laughs> on whether internal illumination includes backlighting. Um, this committee has in the past granted waivers for backlit LED. So regardless of the I, it, the, yes. I'm, the point of it is to be lit and glowing and people to see it. So that, that is the... I would make a motion to approve the two portal signs with an added condition stating there be no off-premise advertising unless in conjunction with the approved event. LED, so can you clarify for the record what LED is required? 
Uh, the code requires 50% at least on the sign surface area, LED, uh, animation or combination of that. It does not speak to whether it's internal illumination. Um, it's been assumed that it's not external and it does not specifically mention backlighting. So the, the way that it is proposed now with the internally illuminated um, sign with the LED, it meets the, the code? Yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and, and, we're, and we're showing, you know, when you look at this rendering, that there's a, a thickness to it, and that thickness will also be wrapped. So it's like a, really the idea is that it's a continuous shell of light, <laughs> for uh, lack of a better description. So, um, so the entire letter on all three sides, essentially, would be um, lit with LED as a source. <laughs> what? Do you still want to wrap it with the LED? Can you read back my motion? <laughs> no. Um, so I'll, I'll rescind my original motion. I have a second motion. The, first, the motion would be to approve waivers for the two portals as depicted in the existing section. With the condition stating no offer was advertising unless in conjunction with an approved light event. And the second would be to ex uh, accept the existing exhibit. Uh, no, but <laughs> we can. <laughs> we'll date it. We'll date it. Okay, that's fine. Yeah. I'll allow the waiver for the wall sign on the south elevation to include a backlit. Internally illuminated. Yeah, thank you. That's a great description. <laughs> I second. There is no any other discussion. All those in favor, aye. Aye. Other than that, so good. <laughs> That show the diodes yeah. of the LED. So staff has something that we can kind of present to uh, some of the members and sure. And we with the technology changing. It's yeah. easier. Not that I want you know manufacturer sign and bring it in here to every meeting, but I think some of these, <laughs> these subtleties may help us clarify our code a little bit. Sure. Um, we and can put TVs up today and have signage out of them. Yeah. Days. We and yes, and we we might even have examples on the within the property of the D of both. Um, uh, I know on the Fremont Street on Fremont Street, the internally lit D is actually exposed cathode. I, if I have to check, but um, and it's actually you see the individual diodes, um, and then there are some interior signs that are internally lit LED. So um, I can, you know, again, like you said, technology changes and whatnot, so we might have a more advanced technology than what we did two years ago. Yeah, if, if you could sure. you know, see if they can provide some samples to staff, then they can, we can put it as a discussion item on this committee going forward. Great. Yeah, we can do that. Next. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. Okay. Director. Members of the committee, Flynn Fag, Planning Director for the City of Las Vegas. This is really more of a heads up item for U.S. committee members to understand uh, your role in assisting us with reviewing our medical marijuana applications. 
Uh, as you may be aware, the City Council adopted zoning regulations for medical marijuana facilities here in the City of Las Vegas back in May. As part of those regulations, specific to one type of medical marijuana facility, the dispensaries, in the minimum requirements for dispensaries, we have a required review by the Downtown Design Review Committee uh, to look at the elevations and the signage for those facilities. The reason why we put that language in the ordinance is in the state law for medical marijuana facilities, and particularly for dispensaries, uh, it has some general guidelines, and we need someone to be able to make an assessment does it meet those aesthetic guidelines. And basically what the state law says is that dispensaries need to have an appearance that is professional, orderly, dignified, and consistent with the traditional style of pharmacies and medical offices and also that their signage is discreet and professional and consistent with the traditional style of pharmacies and medical offices. Uh, and so that's one of the reasons why uh, I elected to have the Downtown Design Review Committee fulfill that role and to make that judgment on the dispensaries is because you have experience in doing aesthetic reviews. Uh, and so that's one of the reasons why we decided to do that. Um, in terms of what you will actually be looking at, it's again only for the dispensaries. You won't be looking at cultivation facilities or production facilities or laboratories, just dispensaries. Because those will be the ones that will be open to the general public and, and that's what we have the most concern in terms of their appearance. Uh, and then secondly, in the regulations for signage for dispensaries, uh, the dispensaries are allowed to have one wall sign per street frontage and the wall sign cannot exceed 30 square feet in area nor two feet in height. And then in terms of illumination, it can be inter internally illuminated, uh, but unlike the other signs to review, it can't have any neon or animation. Uh, and so it has to be, as the state law says, very discreet signage. And so again, uh, that's why we wanted to have the downtown design and use committee do these types of applications. Um, in terms of your review, uh, what I'd like to do is to have a very simple process uh, as it can be. I don't know how many applications will have in here, so we will need to go through these rather quickly. Also, the Downtown Design Review Committee will be making recommendations that then Planning Commission and City Council will consider. So for that reason, the action that the Downtown Design Review Committee would be taking is to either recommend approval of the application as submitted, recommend approval of the application with conditions such as, you know, needs to be painted a neutral color or uh, the signage exceeds the two feet, it needs to be reduced to two feet in height, something along those lines. Or else you may actually deny the application in that it doesn't meet the state criteria nor does it meet the city's limitations on signage. Um, one of the things we don't really have the time to do is we don't have time to hold items in abeyance to have the applicant rework the application. Um, and that's because we're on a rather tight time frame for getting these applications to Planning Commission and City Council. Uh, and so again, your duties would be to either recommend approval, approval with conditions, or to deny, recommend denial of the application as submitted. Uh, and so that's basically what we're asking the Downtown Design Review Committee to do. One of the other things I just wanted to kind of give you a heads up is uh, because um, none, not all of these applications will be in the downtown area, uh, I think what we'll be looking to do is to <coughs> do an ordinance to change uh, some of the, the language relative to the Downtown Design Review Committee. The idea is that we change it to be just a design review committee that your responsibility will continue to be the signage overlay districts that we have in the downtown area. And one of the things that we might see in the future is maybe expanding those duties of the design review committee that as we have more things moved towards an administrative approval, we might use the downtown design review committee to do aesthetic reviews. Uh, and so that's just something that we might look at doing in the future. And I just wanted to give you a heads up in terms of the direction that we might be going with this committee. One of the things that I appreciate about the Downtown Design Review Committee is that we can bring applications to you all very quickly. We don't have the same type of um, notification process that we have to go through with public hearing items that go to Planning Commission City Council. And for that reason, there's a very quick turnaround. I think our applicants appreciate the fact that you are able to review things quite quickly. And so I think there's some benefits to having a design review committee that fulfills those functions as well. 
So with that, that concludes my presentation. Just wondered if you had any questions. Any comments or questions? Well, I think the one uh, thing you did on at the end, my question was, is this in our area or is this expanded to citywide for all the applicants in the city? And, and I think you're saying it is. Yes, it is expanded. It specifically does state that in the zoning ordinance that you will be reviewing dispensaries citywide. And then you already mentioned it's kind of the opposite of what we're doing in the sense up until this one where we're requiring me on yeah. and now this one disallowing me on. Yeah, and what's another reason to have the downtown design review committee do this is because we do have the possibility that there might be dispensaries on Las Vegas Boulevard, which has the scenic byway overlay. So the downtown design review committee is the only one who can do waivers from our sign regulations. And so that's another reason why it's important to have you all involved in doing these types of reviews. One question I have on the, on the design issue with regards to this. somewhere in the state code, or I think somehow we've gone through all of this. It talked about no windows, removal windows, limited door access for security. Mm -hmm. There are some properties that are throughout this community and if you remember, if you were here when the old days of the tavern wars, when taverns were everybody, they just board up the front windows and that would be your tavern covering a glass. And then finally landlords said, you know, hey, we're not gonna let our center get ruined by this look. But to provide the, the level of security and safety that is required also in other parts of the law, there are some, some fairly good alternatives that provide better security without just boarding the glass off. And I'm not sure if this would be the venue that that would be able to talk about that or Yeah, I think there is some possibility. In the state law, it doesn't actually require them to board up windows well, per se. Minimum windows. Yeah, it does require that they have one customer entrance into the building. In terms of windows, you can have windows. It's just that the transaction area and um, basically where you select your product, that can't be visible from the street. But your customer waiting areas could have windows. Uh, so the front space could possibly do that. But again, you bring up a good point. That's a good reason why to have you all do that type of review. Any other comments or questions? Hi, um, Did you mention that if, is there gonna be an administrative review process for this? I can't recall it. No, not for, not for medical marijuana dispensers. I was talking about in the future, for example, the form based code in the downtown area, we might have aesthetic reviews instead of having to go through a public hearing process as a way to shorten uh, review times for, for projects. Uh, that's where we might want to have the downtown design review when you step in and fill that hole. So there's a potential for us to get slammed with quite a few of these at once? <coughs> um, potential, that's something we'd have to look at. We would consult you before we <laughs> involve you in that. Before we turn these into four hour meetings. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. Does it still go through uh, like we do now, where staff is reviewing, making recommendations? Correct. So they're getting the review ahead of time and then sending it to us so we have time to review. And then, like, how many areas, this has nothing to do with this, how many are thought to be included in the? downtown mass of, is it 18? Um, we don't know. We don't know yet. I won't know until July 23rd when our application cycle closes. Okay. And that's when I'll have We don't know it's 17. I don't want to be on um, pretty much straight. Mm, no, we don't know that yet. Okay. We received uh, one application to date. <laughs> okay. Uh, the only other question, I think I brought this up before, I'm not sure if it's a time or place, is attendance. Yeah, I think... I think as we, and we probably should, um, and we reached, we were dealing with Trinity's um, membership at the last planning, I don't know, but I wasn't there. But I think... Uh, well, Trinity is normally here. Right, yeah. He's only missed a couple, I think. I think we need to sit down and uh, whoever has to look at that, is we, we do have a, a, an excessive non-attendance out of Mr. Brown and I'm not saying that, that it isn't, you know, these meetings come at odd days, and I mean, they're always on Tuesday, but, 
and it, there's a there's a reasonable notice to them, but it it is rather important for these meetings to function well as that good attendance to because um, um, more input the better decisions we make. And I think so. We'll look at the attendance policy. Okay. Now, if there's no other discussion as to the marijuana dispensary uh, discussion item, I'll go to item seven. This is a participation public comment. During this portion of the agenda, must be limited to matters within the jurisdiction of the committee. No subject may be acted on by the committee unless it is on the, uh, the subject is on the agenda. Do you wish to speak with this item? And then I just have one question. Uh, I've seen some signage go up. Some is just approved administratively, so it doesn't come. Uh, I know that we have gotten drawings and whatnot on a PAPS blue ribbon can, and then I've never heard anything more about that. Is that still in process, or was that something administratively approved? Or? It's in process, and they've changed it to such a point that it will be administrative. So they're looking to be approved by possibly the end of this week, early next week. And then they could obtain permits as soon as they have their conditions. Okay. And that being, uh, uh, I think that came up earlier today when we were talking about the entertainment area. Mm -hmm. uh, a Budweiser might be there if they're a sponsor of an event that's going to happen in a couple of weeks on that complex. How does that, I, I don't remember how that fell in, that you have a, a PAPS can. Uh, well, it would be similar to Hennessy's, which has a large mm -hmm. bass. elevation of bass. The bass is actually served inside the actual... It has to be our on-premise on advertising requirements. So as long as that product is available on the site of the sign, but it's not an off-premise billboard, I believe it's like the This came up way back when the terrible herb sign on Rancho, just across from the DSC, had the panels of Budweiser and Pepsi below the large animation. And because those two products are available inside the actual gas station retail area, uh, it's not considered to be off premise. So, and with these portals, this, the portal type design, just was a, uh, information, the cost of them are dropping like crazy. The ability to create LED fabric, if you will, that can be put up on a temporary basis. I think we're going to need to look at some of that because what may be reasonable for a one-day event may not be reasonable for 15, 20, 30 days a month because it, it will morph into a full off-premise um, carnival. But, I think we're doing a good job of keeping track of everybody. So if there's nothing else, we're good.